from the people up top pleading the fifth on the incident to the USC president's double standards. This is how Dana White legally slapped his wife. His bosses just won't come out and say what he did was wrong. I mean, since the whole thing happened, there have been no comments from Endeavor, ESPN, or from the UFC itself. Suspending or firing him is too far off. They haven't even released a single statement on it. The only thing that came from them was what White told the media himself, that none of them were happy with what had happened. Apparently, the Endeavor chief executive and UFC owner, Ari Emanuel, and top brass of UFC's broadcasting partner, ESPN, had plenty of discussions on the topic with Dana. But in the end, nothing came of it. In the past, organizations have cut ties with people over things of far less significance than this. But domestic violence just doesn't seem to qualify to do the same to White. Endeavor didn't respond to the media outlets that reached out to them for comments, and ESPN just said that they were going to cover the story on their own platforms. All that happened was that TBS postponed the premiere of the Power Slap League by a single week. Looking at all the inaction, California Legislative Women's Caucus wrote an open to Emanuel, which called for him to replace Dana as the UFC boss. It stated that they were appalled by the inaction of the company on White hitting his wife publicly, and then later coming onto the media to downplay the whole thing. On top of all that, Endeavor has chosen to remain silent on the situation, which is contradictory to their commitment to safety, respect, and accountability. As you guys can expect, this letter was also left unanswered, and Dana continues to work on the UFC to date. Similarly, many other organizations, fans, and journalists reached out to Endeavor and UFC. They all wanted some sort of punishment for Dana, but everyone was left wanting for any solid action against the man. So why didn't anything happen? Well, because Dana is indispensable to Endeavor. Several UFC employees came forward and said that they were shocked at Dana getting violent like that. But they weren't surprised at all by the inaction from his bosses. An unnamed ex-employee said that if it were any other sport, justice would have been swift. But here, Dana has convinced Endeavor that he has the secret sauce when it comes to running the UFC. The thing is that the MMA promotion is the cash cow for its parent company. It brings in 90% of Endeavor's revenue, and it reported $1.1 billion in earnings in 2022. The other entity that Endeavor owns is Professional Bull Riders, or PBR, which is nothing as compared to the UFC. So if the head of PBR would have done something like what Dana did, they would have had to pack their bags the very next day. It's clear that money is a huge factor when it comes down to it. White brings in bags full of it, so that just makes him untouchable. Suspensions and true professional repercussions are one thing, but Dana wouldn't even go along with minor punishments either. Another former UFC employee revealed that it would a challenge to make him seek counseling like anger management sessions, and the only way he'd even consider it would be if a judge ordered it. They even brought up some insights on White's stance on the issue of low fighter pay. Currently, they get less than 20% of the revenue, whereas in other major sports, the athletes get 50%. Dana will tip a waiter $1,000, but if some fighter or employee of his comes to his office to ask for a raise, he just flies off the handle. To him, it's like if you're asking him for money, then you don't respect him. Now that's kind of weird, but it's pretty accurate from what you've probably heard of the UFC boss. That's probably why most fighters didn't even say much when the whole thing went viral, because they were afraid that they weren't going to get fights that they want or the bonuses they deserved. Sure, some people might believe whatever happens between a man and his wife should stay between them, but this didn't happen in private. It happened very publicly on New Year's Eve. You see, guys, Dana and Ann White were out in El Squid Row, a multi-level dance club in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and they were just celebrating with a few fans. The group of people was in the VIP area above the dance floor when the UFC head honcho was caught on camera leaning in to say something to his wife. I can't even imagine what it would have been because Ann's immediate reaction was to smack Dana right across the face and being the big bad man he is, he slapped her right back. This caused all of their fans to jump in to separate the two and the whole thing could be seen by almost everyone in the club on top of being caught on camera. Eyewitnesses at the place said that both Dana and Ann were really drunk at the time, so that might be a big factor in the violence. Ironically, this happened just a few days before the Power Slap League was supposed to premiere originally, but Dana's slap fighting with Ann meant that the show had to be delayed. Apart from that, the whole of the MMA world erupted at the news. Even his own fighters were calling for his head. Daniel Cormier came out and said that what White did was wrong, 
and there are no two ways about it. No man is supposed to put his hands on a woman. Even Dana has said so on the record. So for him to do something like that can't be defended at all. DC was referring to some of the fighters like Sean O'Malley and Jamahal Hill, who were actually trying to justify Dana hitting his wife. Tony Ferguson also took to Twitter to say that Dana's behavior with his wife is a direct reflection of how he treats his employees. Obviously, we don't see it publicly, but if his own former interim champion speaks up against him, then you can probably guess that the athletes working under him aren't all that happy. As weird a guy as Tony is, he's been with the promotion for a very long time, so his voice really matters. And Dana not treating his employees right is something that has been going on for a long time. I mean, the UFC lost their heavyweight champ because he was advocating for fighter rights and Dana refused to even consider them. Anyway, the UFC boss may have apologized, but you could almost see the narcissism radiating out from him. He said that his taking 30 or 60 days away doesn't mean anything because that's not a punishment and it doesn't really hurt him. It'll hurt the company instead. It'll mean that his fighters would have to sit out and his employees would potentially lose their jobs. Dana actually compared him leaving the UFC to COVID just so he could justify him staying at the helm. He also added that he doesn't need any time to reflect because he knows what he did was wrong and the punishment for him is that he'll have to live with it for the rest of his life. People won't see him the same way as they did and they wouldn't respect him like they used to. Sounds like an easy way to get off the hook for a case of public domestic violence to me. Admitting your mistake is great and all, but there has to be some sort of repercussions for him. The UFC may not be as big as the NFL or the NBA, but Dana White is the face of the promotion, and he's been trying to get it up there with the sporting giants. So he still needs to be held accountable, even though his wife may have forgiven him. Yep, she did. Ann White came out and said that they were ashamed at what had happened. And she was very surprised by the way Dana acted that night, because he has never been violent before that. That part actually corroborates with what his former employees also said. So maybe it was just this once that he kind of lost control, but that still doesn't justify in any way what he did. She also said that they apologized to each other and to their children and would like to be given their privacy to sort this out on their own. She may have let bygones be bygones, but Dana holds double standards for himself and his fighters. And they reminded him of that at the first chance that they got. Ramsey Nijem took to Twitter to tell Dana that he suspended him for nine months just because he smoked some weed once. But according to Dana's standards, he should be known as a weed user and would have had to live with that his whole life. Al Quinta also chimed in saying that he was banned from three bonuses because he cursed at the crowd and wrecked a hotel room. So his punishment should have meant that he'd be known as a hotel wrecker for the rest of days and his paycheck shouldn't have been taken away for that. You all know that wasn't the case. Maybe Dana should take it a little easy on his fighters from now on, but I doubt that's gonna happen because they're not indispensable to the promotion like he is. So from the UFC president's double standards to the people up top pleading the fifth on the incident, this is how Dana White illegally slapped his wife.